Hello and welcome to Freedom Watch, your daily dose of raw liberty streaming online at foxnews.com slash Freedom Watch. I'm Judge Andrew Napolitano here defending freedom, defending your natural rights, and defending your right to have a government that stays within the confines of the Constitution. The Republican primary in the state of Texas has been one of the more exciting races in the nation this season. The main reason is a virtual unknown, Deborah Medina, has become an overnight sensation and has taken the Lone Star State by storm. Deborah Medina is the true Tea Party candidate in the race. Her poll numbers went from about 4% to the mid-30s in a short period of time, and she's running against an incumbent sitting governor. Her stance on the primacy of the individual, the right to limited government, the right to keep and bear arms, low taxes, banning the government from taking private property, and fidelity to the Constitution is clearly resonating with Texans, but quite the opposite with certain political pundits. Joining me now is Deborah Medina. Deborah, welcome back to Freedom Watch. It's great to be with you again, Judge. Deborah, I was in Plano, Texas uh, not too long ago where I spoke to about a thousand people at lunch, mostly uh, Tea Party activists. And in fairness to the three of you, I mentioned all three names and the governor was actually there at the gathering. When I mentioned your name, the biggest roar went up and I was not surprised because I described you in mentioning your name as the staunchest defender of our natural liberties and of the Constitution. Is that argument resonating with Republicans in this primary for governor? I think there's no question. We have been, I guess we're in our eighth day of early voting today. We have today, tomorrow, and Friday of early voting. And thus far, the turnout in the Republican primary in Texas is higher than it was even in the last presidential primary election. So there's no question Texans are waking up to the reality that their next governor in all likelihood is going to be nominated in the Republican primary, and they are coming out and voting in record numbers. We have to believe, of course, that that is going to pretend very well for this campaign. Two of the issues, as I understand them, uh, and, and these are frequently issues in Republican primaries, are property rights and taxes. As I understand it, uh, the governor, who's been the governor for a long time, does not hesitate to use the state's eminent domain power to take the property that he wants, whether it's to build a highway from Mexico to Arizona or Oklahoma or for whatever other purpose, and that you have argued against it, and that you have also argued against property taxes. Tell me about those two arguments in this race against your two opponents. Well, we've really begun to talk about the fact that all of us are just tenants on the property and the government in everything that it does by all of its actions shows us clearly that it views itself as the overlord or the land lord uh, over our property. We're just simply tenants and we see that in the tax policies as though we have to rent the property um, eternally from the government. We see it in the abuse of eminent domain. Um, in the taking of that property or the giving of the property to foreign interests because there's this view that ultimately everything belongs to the government. You and I would recognize that as terribly destructive to a constitutional republic. We know that our founders understood, in fact, that private property ownership was an essential element of freedom, as, as essential to freedom as air and water are to life. Right. We have got to eliminate property tax and harness eminent domain back to its constitutional limits if we're going to secure freedom. And that's been the cornerstone of this campaign in Texas. Well, one of the biggest roars at this gathering in Plano, Texas, uh, where I mentioned your name, was when I defended Thomas Jefferson's position on eminent domain, which is that the government doesn't have eminent domain rights. And just like anybody that wants or covets your property. The government can only get it by your free willing bargain and sale of the property rather than them coming in saying it's ours now, let's decide how much we owe it to you. But 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 your eminent domain issue is a different one. I mean, is the government of the state of Texas actually trying to take private property to build some highway from Mexico deep into the heart uh, of the Southwest and it's not even clear who would own, who would maintain or who, American or not, could even use that highway? 
That's correct, and the governor has told us that that proposal has died five deaths, and yet just the week before last at a committee hearing, um, Homeland Security committee hearing in the state's capital, a member of the staff of the Texas Department of Transportation reiterated that, in fact, that plan is alive and well. It's alive and well in the governor, governor's administration. It's alive and well in the senator's uh, transportation plan. She just calls it by another name, a multimodal transportation network. We've seen it renamed several times, but the emphasis and the effort is still uh, very much alive. Unless we get new leadership in Texas, Deborah Medina says we will not surrender our sovereignty and we will restore true private property ownership in Texas. Uh, Deborah, can you can you win this primary with less than 50 percent, or are we looking at a runoff if no, nobody no. gets 50? No, no, no. I didn't feel like you absolutely that. have to have a clear majority. So many are predicting a runoff. We've been saying for some weeks now that we would be in that. In fact, we believe we've got an opportunity to, to have a real political upset here and potentially win. Remember that we've got three times the number of people uh, voting in this primary than we've ever had before. Independent Texans, uh, which is about five million strong, is turning out their base for this primary, uh, endorsing Deborah Medina for governor. So, it's going to be a real roller coaster, and we are working hard. Grassroots activists all over the state and from beyond are working hard. So, keep your eye on Texas. Next Tuesday is the election, and I'm sure we'll be broadcasting live uh, from a, a great barbecue spot here in South Texas, looking at what happened in that race. <laughs> sounds sounds very tempting. The barbecue. Uh, last question. I live in New Jersey, which has the highest state income tax in the union. You don't have a state income tax in Texas and the highest property taxes in the union. You have argued that you could run the Texas government with no property taxes. That is heaven to someone like me who's accustomed to paying, you know, 10% of the value of my property over to the local taxing authority every year. Judge, we're looking first and foremost at what are the essential elements of freedom. Government's job is to protect life, liberty, freedom, and property. That is private property ownership. Once we secure that freedom, then we do have to, uh, to find the methods that are best able to support the service that government needs to do while creating the least burden on the backs of those families and businesses. And we believe that as you look at the economic, economics of that equation, you recognize that a sales tax or a consumption tax is the least oppressive to families and businesses, and that's what we're advocating be used in Texas to fund the government, a sales tax and only a sales tax, no income tax, no property tax. Let's have freedom again, because we all know where there's freedom, there's prosperity, and the people will flourish. That's De what we're working for here in Texas. Deborah, I hope we get a chance to chat on Tuesday evening. It's always a pleasure. Good luck to you. Thanks for joining us on Freedom Watch. Thank you, Judge.